it's Saturday. We wrapped early, got home early. So I'm getting a little advanced prep time in for the next three assignments on the road, back to back, three different projects. I won't be coming home in between them. So the second assignment, we're gonna shoot two FX9s with prime lenses. It's my red prime case. That case is way too big. And for many years, over a decade now, I've intended to have two custom ATA cases made that each hold three of those lenses but I haven't done it. Instead, what I do is I end up just jamming the lenses in a, a backpack or something, and I'll hang this up high in the truck somewhere safe for the drive. Uh, maybe I'll swap my, one of my son's diapers from when he was a little baby. Yeah, I'll put some more of this Velcro foam in, a little bit classier. But uh, yeah, so I'll have two 50s. I have an EF mount 50, and then this PL 50, 85, 50, and a 35. I imagine that interview is gonna be like an 85 and a 50 or an 85 and a 35. We're doing an interview and as part of the set dressing, we're gonna have these four foot vertical light tubes in the background. Now, traditionally I would use Kino flows or quasars. I sold off all my Kino stuff when I was still in California. So I've had success with these LED shop fixtures. I just got these from the local Home Depot on my way home today. I've used these previously in um, one of my videos that we shot at a public television station. We had a a set like a three camera set that we constructed for the job and a stage and i had to downlight recess lighting to downlight the flats and we use these instead of kinos and it worked out great they're color temp selectable 3000 4000 5000 the 5000 looks great i didn't see any uh tint shift on them i do remember the 3000 having i think it was a lot of magenta i forget if it was green or magenta i think it was magenta but anyway we're gonna run them at 5000 Threw up the 85 mil red prime, 2.8 aperture, ISO 1600, 23 shutter, just standard. And the intensity level of that fixture looked great. You can see here the power cord comes out of the end of the fixture and I tore this thing apart thinking I was going to need to have the cord exit out the backside. You can see there's a knockout here for when you install them on a ceiling or a wall, put a half inch stress restraint in there. And I could do that, but I was also thinking I could take this little socket, it's riveted in place, drill out this rivet, and then um, cut this open, make, I'm sorry, cut my own square and just re-chassis mount the socket on the backside. But that requires cutting and re-soldering the terminals. I gotta do three of them. I made these three bases. I don't want to spend the uh, 90 minutes to three hours that it's going to take me to make that all custom. So at a 2.8 aperture, these look fine out of focus. This cord is concealed in the bokeh and there's some nice halo from the fixture. So I don't think it's a problem. Well, had a little mishap. This is from being overtired. We wrapped today. I've been working out in the sun for six days straight. And I left the gimbal camera up here and then I, on my stop at Home Depot to buy that shop light hit a speed bump and oops it didn't break any of the cables that were connected but it bent the follow focus a little bit the, this um, this attachment rod Ooh, grinding the screen there way to go Dave um, oh yeah lens into the divider so uh, I'm gonna have to test this out um, yeah, I gotta just not obviously put that up there even temporarily when we're on location. It was hidden behind the FX9. So when I glanced, shutting the door to hit the road, I checked to make sure my cart was strapped in, but I had the uh, outboard cover covering up the the uh, Sony cam and it, I couldn't see the black magic. And I think I'm gonna make like a little plywood fence on three sides. I'll just, with some cabinet screws, attach it to this ply that's here so that that'll just, even when I'm rolling around on locations, I can have batteries and audio items, miscellaneous kit just up here and I don't have to worry about it falling off. I also need to find a home for my audio mixer bag. I've been leaving it on the countertop with a rope ratchet. It's okay. I'm thinking maybe I make a little overhead cabinet for it like maybe up over the sink, a little slot with a door. This would be more convenient, maybe by the door here. I'm thinking I make a little shelf that'll hold these two quad chargers loaded with batteries. 
and then maybe above that is the audio mixer bag yeah that's a better spot for it i like leaving this section open for my rolling luggage personal items but i'm thinking yeah battery chargers lower overhead and i, I am eventually going to put in a ac power inverter so i can charge all my gold mount batteries anytime i'm driving all right we'll save the cloth diaper for a future project all right, truck's packed for three different projects. Get my prop shop LED strip lights, 17 to 120, GoPro kit, two FX9s, gimbal package, 15 inch teleprompter, which is for a uh, iDirect type interview. Eight foot ramp for the tool chest, rock and roller for all of these cases. No upper shelf this trip. Sandbags, makeshift shelf for the live shots for the correspondent to sit down his two to three cell phones. Uh, my grip package of five and one reflectors, tool bag for when we're shooting news, run bag for batteries, wireless mics, on camera light, that sort of thing. Uh, two Geminis, stingers, two 25-foot HDMI cables for the iDirect setup, uh, the frame assembly for the teleprompter. FX9 cases are in the back, but one of the camera bodies is riding on the cart. No lens for the drive. I've got a three-hour drive to my hotel tonight. Borrowed an easy up from my dad so that if we get any rain during our live shots, I'll be able to cover up camera correspondent and lighting. Some water. That distilled water jug is for me to top off my house batteries. I keep forgetting to do that. I'm going to handle that this week. Time code slate, much like my audio mixer, it doesn't have a home right down here in my junk shelf i have some scrap plywood in the garage and i plan to make a bunch of rectangular or square shaped divider cells down here so all of these like my shaving cream my box of tea wd-40 propane cylinder dish soap hand soap painkillers shampoo all these random items that are essential to surviving on the road uh, won't tip over like, for example, gosh, I think I threw this soup back here. My first road trip in this van. Oof. Hasn't swelled up. I think it's still good. Sunday night, Eagle Pass, Texas. I think I got about a 30 minutes of dusk light remaining. I just shot some scenics of the city. Well, I got City Hall, which is also the police station. Got some signage. Got some kids playing at a monument that's at a park that says Eagle Pass. And uh, did the ubiquitous flags and city hall signage. That's ah, behind the tree, you can't see it. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get one more shot somewhere here in town before I run out of light.
go away. Uh, one thing I would say that this whole crisis has done is it, it's brought people together. Uh, it, it's unified. It's unified certainly our caucus is unified in making sure uh, the Republican caucus is unified in making sure in here. I've been camped out for a couple hours. Captured a father and son from Cuba. They made it across. They made the swim. I didn't get them swimming. I didn't catch them until they were on the shore on this side. The National Guard had already uh, zeroed in on them, but saw some footage of them checking in, getting processed. Uh, but my van is like three quarters of a mile away other side of this golf course I don't have a chair I got crappy worn out shoes I didn't think I was going to be down here this long the producer ran off to get lunch for us when he gets back I'm going to eat lunch and then uh, talk to the folks here this is all Fox News I got a sat truck I think I have three cam ops sound person, producer I think I an Airstream tra trailer and they're doing their live shots right under the, the center pillar of the bridge here. Okay, so here is the six SIM card, six modem TVU live uplink unit. It's a backpack, it has an SDI and HDMI input. But it also acts as a Wi-Fi hotspot over the bonded six. Okay, so I'm uploading footage to the station using uh, their platform. You can see here I'm getting 11 megabits off that backpack, which is fantastic. I was getting one megabit at the hotel Wi-Fi, and then it slowed down to 0.2 megabit for the duration last night. I didn't have the TVU yesterday. Sun was out when I set up. It isn't right now. Not sure what's gonna happen. We got a little bit of rain about an hour ago. I have an easy up, but I don't think I'm gonna need it. light stand on the other side of the shipping container to get signal Venezuela and Cuba seems to be the predominant folks here oh, a few Nicaragua today as well such a contrast and these gentlemen are just enjoying a nice day of golf Uh, we've been moving around to get uh, the check-in processing activity in the background and they move pretty quick. I got 
TVU pack. I'm gonna end up throwing this on my back so that if I gotta pop off sticks and shoot the hit handheld, it's a fast transition. I'm gonna have to call feeds and make sure they patch me up. I got my replacement came in today from Atlanta. I gotta go shoot another project for a few days. And then they asked me if I go to Yuma next week for five days, which would mean I travel from Dallas home to San Antonio on Sunday, and then I would fly Sunday night to Yuma airline mode. I need a couple hours to switch all my kit to airline. And I get three doctor appointments next week. I've rescheduled multiple times. So I'm gonna take the week off and I'm trying to, uh, I gotta recover. I've hit uh, burnout burnout mode other than the three weeks i mean i was here in march i took three weeks off in march but i ended up working construction six day weeks for three weeks and uh yeah so basically i've been just working mostly on the road since the first week of january and today is uh i think it's the last week of april so yeah, next week I gotta recover, clean up my diet, get to the gym. I got a little checklist of repair items to tend to with my equipment. Yeah. Show you this right here. Some folks are getting returned to Mexico to the border patrol. There's a van up there, see the blinking lights and that group of people just unloaded from that van and are headed back into mexico i don't know if that's mexican nationals only that get released into mexico i think that's the situation like i don't think if you came up from elsewhere nicaragua venezuela cuba they're not going to send you back to piedras negras mexico you see over there And one other surprising thing I saw is, or is the U.S. side here. Lots of trash and mostly dirt and dead grass. And the other side of the river is a park, nicely groomed and maintained. Green grass. They had a big landscaping crew out there two days ago. And uh, one of the, the golfers here was telling us that this park on the riverbank used to be a neighborhood with houses right on the water. And it was uh, heavily gang controlled with the uh, trafficking across the river. So the municipality took out all those houses and made it a park so that they've got a little bit of a barrier for enforcement. Had some questions about this transmission unit tvu networks here comes the wind it's wind free until i hit record on my iphone i apologize for all my videos being filled with wind noise obviously i uh gotta keep the bts gear to a minimum um okay so we got six sim cards in this unit looks like it'll do up to eight and we're pushing five megabit and a one second delay the station on the receive side controls all the settings on this unit. So like when we do a tape feed, like often we'll, we'll shoot stand-ups, look lives, and they record that back in Chicago, and they'll increase the delay, uh, which I think for, I'm not sure if they increase the bit rate as well. And then I've done like tape playout for footage and camera playing it back for them to record on the other side and they'll go out to like a 10 or even a 12 second delay i would imagine that means they can also increase the data rate a bit but when we're doing a live tv back and forth with the anchors uh, one second delay is the minimum this unit will do and uh let's see are there there's a couple other menu pages uh oh standby oops Hope I didn't screw that up. See, I touched things and I broke it. Crap, I'm gonna have to call him again. 
I want to keep going on this network news, freelance work, I'm going to have to invest in a proper two-thirds inch three-chip ENG camera. I love those cameras. Probably got more time shooting on that format of camera than the big sensor stuff. I'm going to ask to get the stack staff photog relieving me this for the evening news today. And uh, I'm going to chat with him. I don't even know what model camera they shoot on in the house. I think they're Sony rigs. It's looking, I can get like a, I think I can get away with a 10, eight year older model, the PMW 350 or 400 Sony's. I just, uh, I imagine that the hit is gonna be low light, high gain performance versus something that's brand new. I don't need 1080, I'm sorry, I don't need 4K for TV. Uh, and then lenses are the, just just like in big sensor. The real cost is on the optic side. I'd like to have a uh, like 20 by 7.5. I think 18 by 7.5 is about like, I think it's like 130, 138 millimeter. Um, 17 to 120. And I'll run this camera sometimes in 2K mode, which is uh, super 16 sensor size, which I believe is just slightly larger than two thirds inch. So. I can get similar reach on this camera, but I've got to constantly switch menu settings, sensor scan area, and it is a little bit softer, this camera windowed in, in 1080. But uh, at any rate, I'm kind of thinking the next year, ooh, we've got a little activity here. This week for audio, whenever I need a lav mic, I've been alternating between the Electrosonics and Rode Wireless Go. The Electro with the Sank and mic sounds superior and it's got a lower noise floor, but I keep getting hits randomly. Like I'll listen to the thing for 15 minutes before we have to roll and it's clean and then mid-interview I'll get a hit or a pop or static. These things are, uh, my transmitters are block 22 with some block 21 and some block 23 and all three blocks are very crowded. So this morning I'm gonna go back to the, the Go. Normally for live shots, I go hardwired, boom on a stand. But for this particular position, because we wanna reposition to get background with law enforcement and migrants case by case, I've gotta go wireless. Yeah, so Two channels of this, $6,500, which I just spent in December. Two road channels, two uh, $500. Maybe $600 with the wired lavs. But then I have a few producers that will not use the road purely out of price point and brand, and they insist on the Electros. Oh. All right, one hour break. Let's see if I can get a little power nap in.
got up about 4.30 this morning, morning live shots, then shot some elements for a package, handed off to my replacement photographer who's carrying on the torch. Just drove five hours, I'm in Houston now. I'm gonna take a shower here at this truck stop. Spend the night in the truck. And uh, anyway, the reason I'm recording in here is I've had a few people ask what showers are like on the road. This is your typical truck stop shower. Nice and clean. Got a sink, basin. I always bring my own towel and soap, but they generally provide. If you don't have, uh, let's go a restroom stall. Also nice and clean. This one was $15. I've seen as low as 13 on the road the past two years. So yeah, gonna shower up and uh, get a good night's sleep in the van. They will reimburse for a hotel, the show I'm on, but I'll get a better night's sleep. Such reduced number of hours, I'd rather have the extra time to lounge around than check into a, drive to a hotel, check in, all that. And I get a 25 minute drive to a location tomorrow morning. Your truck. Do a little plug. Posted on shitty rigs? Yeah. <laughs> now my, my van has the first position. Yeah. I've made shitty rigs a few times. Oh yeah, I, I'm of shitty rig fame as well. Record that. I'm gonna document that. Look at that. With a capital J. Yep. <laughs> we don't need Apple boxes. So what would be the New York equivalent to that? Like that would be like uh that's a, that, like a two gallon trash can. So that's like, like a, a two gallon. Is it like Connecticut, Rhode Island, Rhode Island and Massachusetts? Yeah, for sure. Last day of a six day week. I'm up in Dallas, project three of three. I think I'm gonna be able to stay single FX9, 28 to 135 all day working outside. NDA, can't really show you what we're doing, but uh, it's outdoors and it's a fun one. In addition, I'm downloading yesterday's footage, television show. We shot three cameras, a two camera interview, and then the gimbal. Oh, and we did some drone shots inside a warehouse area. So four, I guess four cameras. I'm just gonna download that this morning. I gotta FedEx that drive to production on Monday. Well, this six days on the road, Eagle Pass, Texas, then Houston, Texas, and then north of Dallas in the Little Elm area. We are wrapped and just offloading footage. 118 gigs today. And throughout the day, I offloaded yesterday's footage from three different sources, as I discussed earlier. This road trip, I've had to top off my Gold Mount Bricks on uh, each drive to the next location. So I only have this little 300 amp square wave inverter. And then that runs off my two house batteries. And then I've got a couple of USB 2.1 amp, I believe, ports. So like I can drone charger and then my road go mics, cell phones. I think I'm gonna do a couple of mods in the coming week. I'm gonna put in a second or third one of these dual USB 2 amp, 2.1 amp ports. I think I gotta add another terminal block or just swap that one out for a bigger one because I believe I'm full down there. And then with this little 300 amp inverter, excuse, excuse me, 300 watts, I can only charge two gold mount batteries. If I do a third, it I blow the fuse. My other truck charger, this was an eBay, Chinese brand knockoff clone charger. I replaced the fan a couple of years ago and it popped on us yesterday. I had my uh, AC click a battery on and he's like, I heard a popping sound and it went dead when I clicked the third battery on it and now it's totally dead. So I'm gonna open that up, see if I can find a fuse or a loose connection, but uh, probably time to replace that with something better.